this is how I decided to set up my coffee can based mini foundry furnace. Having completed the furnace body, made burners and crucibles, it was time to pull the whole project together on some kind of a stand, so I took some scrap steel and I welded up a uh, two-level stand so that I got some storage underneath and the coffee can mini foundry furnace is up top. I also made a little uh, lid swivel that's set to the height of uh, the coffee can furnace so I can just easily swivel the lid aside when I need to look inside or uh, insert or remove the crucible. The burner shown here is one of my do-it-yourself uh, fairly high output ones. Uh, it'll run uh, either on the propane tank shown or on the yellow tanks of uh, map gas, choice is yours. But the propane's strong enough to uh, melt copper and brass as well as aluminum using the burner shown. This burner is air-assisted and it's set up to use compressed air. So I mounted a regulator and I can hook my shop airline up to the regulator and then open the regulator just a tiny bit to give me the small amount of uh, air assist I need. Another thing uh, when you set up, make sure your propane tank can be located as far as possible uh, from the uh, hot part of the furnace. Now, if you've decided to use a barbecue tank, of course you probably got uh, a long hose and your barbecue tank could be uh, located uh, a fair and uh, safe distance away from the uh, foundry furnace setup. To get into the safe casting and melting of metals, we need a few other things as well as our furnace, burners, and crucibles. Should have a fire extinguisher or two at hand. Should have a bucket of sand. I'm also showing a five gallon pail of water with a lid on it. You'll need some heavy welding gloves because of the heat involved. And you should also have some kind of a full face shield, in this case under the gloves. I have a uh, arc welding mask. I've taken out the uh, shade 10 lens for arc welding and I've replaced it with a uh, clear glass lens. Even if you're doing this work in summertime, you should still wear work boots, long pants, long sleeves, and uh, even some kind of uh, heat-resistant welding coveralls or uh, some uh, leather welding protective gear. After all, molten metal is very unforgiving. Sand molds are made of uh, damp sand, and if the sand is slightly too damp, there can be sudden releases of steam, and you don't want to be exposed to hot steam or any little bits of metal that could uh, also be ejected if the mold is too wet and you got a small uh, steam release or steam explosion. For the purposes of this part of the video, so I could get decent video, I'm actually showing this thing set up on top of the workbench. But uh, if I'm going to use it, I would set it up on the concrete floor, just because I'd prefer my crucible of molten metal to be handled as close to the ground as possible, always. Again for safety reasons. Since this thing's built, at this point I'm going to uh, pause the video and I'm going to set it up properly on the concrete floor here so that we can melt some aluminum and then uh, melt some brass. 
I've moved everything down onto the concrete floor like I said I was going to. It's all uh, set up now and uh, I'm going to melt a little aluminum first. We can see uh, that there's some scrap aluminum piled beside the crucible there. That's what we'll be melting. And let's take a quick look at the mold. I've prepared a, a sand mold to make ingots. I used the three uh, whitish colored wood patterns at the back. Uh, these are uh, very handy to make if you want to repetitively cast scrap into ingots. Anyway, the mold's ready, so let's uh, melt some aluminum first. I filled the crucible with loose aluminum scrap, so it's uh, time to light the furnace. Now the gas is open slightly. I'll light a small piece of toilet paper, drop it in. Propane has lit. Time to slightly open the air assist. Slightly more propane. It's now burning at a low level. Let it warm up a little bit. running fairly low. I'll let it heat up a little bit, then I'll put the crucible in and turn it up. Let's put the crucible in and uh, get melting. Hook on to it. Sure. 
would give me a full crucible when that melts. Just be another minute or two and then I'll be uh, able to pour the ingots. Let's shut off the furnace and uh, lift the crucible out onto the fire brick. Gas off. Air off. There's our aluminum out. Just move the camera over uh, to the mold. I have an airline nearby randomly in this video setup, so I'm going to shield it with the piece of metal. Now I'll grab the crucible in my fireplace tongs and uh, pour the aluminum. There's one, and I guess I'll just get a uh, partial uh, second ingot there. Put the crucible back on the fire brick to cool. It'll take that aluminum a little while to uh, harden up in uh, the sand mold here. We can see it steaming and smoking as it slowly cools down. Now I'll have two rather more useful aluminum ingots for casting made up from a whole bunch of uh, shop scrap and offcuts. I've now loaded a crucible with scrap brass. Let's do a brass melt. Brass has only been in a few minutes and it's already approaching melting temperature. That brass is melted, but there's still uh, lots of uh, room in the crucible, so I'm going to add more. Brass is liquid, so let's uh, shut this off and uh, get the crucible out and uh, pour our ingot. Gas and air are off. Crucible is out. Move the camera over to the sand mold and pour the brass. Yeah, 
I thought I'd only get one ingot out of that, and that's all I'm getting. But that'll be a lot more convenient to work with than a whole pile of small scrap. Let's let this new ingot cool down, then we'll pull it out and have a look at it. Here's a look at the uh, coffee can furnace. The cat litter based refractory is holding up very well. It's not cracking or disintegrating. Even though this thing's done a few aluminum and a few brass melts now. Well, we'll see how it holds up over time as it gets used more. If you run off a torch or camping tank bottle like I am here, you might want to keep an eye on your tank and make sure you're not drawing so much propane off that the tank starts to freeze. If it starts to freeze, you'll lose propane pressure and uh, therefore also lose heat. If this starts to happen, uh, it's often sufficient to just put your hand on the propane bottle to uh, warm it gently and the pressure will come back up. Brass ingot has cooled down some. It's no longer red hot, it's just boiling hot. So I should be able to lift it out here with the pliers and uh, Clunk it on the floor a couple of times to get any sand off it. Now I'll put it next to the uh, aluminum ingots there. The sand mold is still steaming hot from where I pulled that brass out. Today we recovered some useless bitty scrap aluminum and brass and converted it into ingots that are much easier to work with when doing a future melt. When you cast your ingots, of course make sure you cast them into a shape and size such that they'll fit into your crucible for a future melt. The next time I show this uh, foundry furnace set up in a video, I'll be casting some aluminum or brass part that I need.